On April 27th, Nikolai Yeager set out on a climb on Lhotse Shar. Little did he know it would be his last journey. At over 6,500 meters, he was alone, without supplemental oxygen, and facing the daunting task of reaching the 8,400 meter summit. Jaeger had begun the ascent with a team of fellow climbers, but as the climb progressed, they became separated, each facing the mountain's challenges alone, with the most difficult part of the climb still ahead of them. The mountain presented a steep, exposed face that would test Jaeger to his limits. It was here, amidst the fierce winds and extreme cold, that he would make his final push for the summit. This was the last time Nikola Jaeger was seen, and the mystery of his disappearance began. This is his story. Lhotse Shar, standing at 8,382 meters, is a smaller peak compared to its neighbor, the towering 8,516 meter Lhotse. Although it's not considered a separate mountain, this eastern peak of Lhotse presents a formidable challenge as the routes to reach the subsidiary summit are extremely difficult climbs. The most common routes are the southeastern flank of the Shar itself, or the more direct route, Lhotse's towering south face. The first documented attempts of Lhotse Shar took place in 1964 and 1965. However, neither of these climbs were successful and had to be given up at 8,150 meters due to a difficult gap in the terrain. The first successful ascent of Lhotse Shar was achieved on May 12, 1970 by two members of an Austrian team where they reached the summit via the Southeast Ridge using bottled oxygen. In 1984, a team from Czechoslovakia accomplished the first ascent without bottled oxygen, reaching the summit on May 20th and May 21st via a new route on the south face. Since then, out of 36 attempts on Lhotse Shar, only 9 teams have succeeded, taking 4 different routes. In total, 24 climbers have reached the summit, with 13 doing so without bottled oxygen. Even today, Lhotse Shar remains a rarely climbed peak, with the last ascent recorded in 2007. Tragically, 10 climbers have lost their lives while attempting its challenging slopes, indicating a relatively high fatality rate and further highlighting the difficult path. Nikola Jaeger was born on October 20, 1946, in Bologna Bilianco, France. His mother was a renowned photographer, and it was under her creative influence that Nicola developed a deep appreciation for the beauty and grandeur of nature. From a young age, Nicola was drawn to the mountains, the towering peaks of the Mont Blanc Massif became his playground, where he honed his skills as an alpinist. He was not content with following the paths of others, instead, he sought to carve out his own roots, making over 100 solo ascents and achieving several first ascents that would cement his reputation as a pioneering mountaineer. His passion for climbing was matched only by his dedication to medicine. As a physician, Nicola understood the physical and psychological demands of high altitude climbing. This unique perspective allowed him to push the boundaries of what was considered possible in the realm of mountaineering. Jaeger's feats were not confined to the Alps. He ventured to the Andes where he continued to challenge himself with solo ascents, further demonstrating his remarkable ability to adapt and excel in some of the world's most unforgiving environments. In 1978, he became a part of a French expedition that went on a historic ascent of Mount Everest. At the summit, Jaeger, known for his unorthodox approaches, conducted an experiment that would become a talking point Point in mountaineering circles. He removed his oxygen mask and lit an unfiltered cigarette. This act was not just for bravado. Jaeger was keenly interested in the effects of oxygen deprivation at extreme altitudes. His observations were telling. While stationary, he found it manageable to be without an oxygen mask, but any movement became extremely difficult due to hypoxia. At altitudes of over 8,000 meters, the Earth's atmosphere is so thin that it creates inaccessible bubbles around the highest summits. Fields of rock and snow at the outer limits of the stratosphere are shielded 
shielded from human intrusion by an invisible barrier known as hypoxia. Hypoxia literally means the absence of oxygen, acting like an insidious poison that suffocates not only the lungs and muscles, but also the brain. The following day, Jaeger and his fellow climber, Jean Afanasieff, made a record-breaking ski descent from 8,200 meters to 6,500 meters in just one hour, continuing their rapid descent to Camp 1. Jaeger's Everest experiment was a precursor to his more extreme achievements the following year. On Novato Hawaii, in 1979, he spent 60 days alone at 6,700 meters to study the body's response to high altitudes. During this time, he smoked 70 packs of cigarettes, a testament to his heavy smoking habit, and documented his psychological measurements and experiences in the book Carne de la Salitude. A year later, on April 16, 1980, Jaeger set out on his climb of Lhotse South Face Direct. This route is documented as one of the largest alpine walls in the world. As Lhotse towers over the entire Everest base camp, it is littered with rock bands and the entire ascent is made in an avalanche prone area. He managed to reach an altitude of 6,500 meters, but had to turn back because of the high risk of a snow slide. Disappointed, he returned to base camp after four days on April 20th. Undeterred by his initial setback, Jaeger planned his next attempt differently. This time, he aimed to ascend further to the right of the south face, which would lead him to Lhotse Shar. Jaeger shared his ambitious plan with those at base camp. He expressed his intention to undertake a massive traverse, which had been unheard of before. Starting from Lhotse Shar, he planned to continue to Lhotse Main, passing through the then unclimbed Lhotse Middle, and eventually descending via the western Kum. Additionally, he contemplating attempting the solo ascent of Everest. This traverse represented an incredibly challenging and risky undertaking, with slim chances of success. However, Jaeger remained confident in his abilities and believed he could withstand the harsh conditions at high altitudes for an extended period. Jaeger would bring along enough food for 15 days and set out from Lhotse Shar Southeast Ridge on April 25th. Over the next two days, he would climb higher and higher, as men watched from base camp through a telephoto lens. He was at an altitude of 8,200 meters on Lhotse Shar, when the mountain's unpredictable nature provided to be an insurmountable challenge. The weather had turned bad, and strong winds hit the mountain, ripping anything off its face not properly secured. As the thin air clung to his lungs, Jaeger vanished into the icy abyss, no longer visible from below. His last moments remain a haunting mystery, leaving a void in the hearts of fellow climbers and adventurers. Jaeger had made it clear that if he didn't return within 15 days, it should be assumed he didn't make it back and there was no need for a search. Unfortunately, bad weather persisted for six days, and despite a helicopter search, there was just no sign of him. Following his family's wishes, the search was called off. For many, this marked the end of the story, and for 39 years, even Jaeger's family believed this was all they would ever know about his final climb. However, three years after Jaeger's fatal 1980 expedition, a discovery was made that went unnoticed by almost everyone. On October 21st, 1983, Canadian climber Roger Marshall went on his own Himalayan quest. As he pushed towards the summit of Lhotse Seychar, he stumbled upon a solitary tent. According to some studies, the tent didn't belong to Jaeger, but was from a previous expedition, possibly in 1965 by the Japanese, or maybe from the first ascent team in 1970, or even the Korean team in 1971. Sadly, I don't think anyone will ever know for certain which party the tent belonged to. There are wide slopes between 7,143 and 8,019 meters, suggesting the tent was near the 8,019 meter mark. This implies Jaeger might have reached 8,200 meters before turning back to the tent around 8,000 meters, if the supplies were in fact his. During an investigation into the Tomo season case in 2013 to 2014, mountaineering researcher Rodolphe Popier discovered a note in the Himalayan database referring to the book Canadians on Everest, The Courageous Expedition of 1982. The book recounts the tale of the inaugural Canadian climb to the top of Everest. In the book, it is mentioned that climber Roger Marshall came across the body of Nikola Jaeger in 1983 on Lhotse Shar. Jaeger's body was found inside a tent located less than 500 meters below the summit. Sadly, Marshall passed away in 1987, preventing confirmation of this theory. 
but if you believe his words, it leads people to believe that the tint was in fact Jaeger's. The risk and challenges faced by Nikola Jaeger serve as a sobering reminder of the dangers inherent in high altitude mountaineering. His memory will surely endure, motivating future adventurers to approach similar challenges with both caution and admiration. Thanks for watching. Until next time.